In this video, I'm going to show you four hacks to create realistic light effects in Photoshop. We will go over neon electrical light and the popular rim lighting that everyone likes to use in their images. Be sure to stick to the end because I'll show you how to get that nice fire glow in your artworks. So let's get into the tutorial. So this is the image without any of the lighting. And although it looks alright, it's very kind of one note, there's not a lot of dynamic range in the image, we've got a quite low key image. So let's go through the image and start putting the light back into the image. So let's start with the natural light. So we go to the bottom, because we have a daytime image and we've got, as you can see here, we've got the clouds but you've got this light in the clouds here and this is whereabouts where the sun would be. So if we start bringing that image in, this part of the building here, I just lightened it with curves. When the light, natural light is coming this way, it will be interacting with the buildings. Same with this building here, I just lightened that up a little bit, pulled up the contrast again, when we've got natural light, the things that around that light will reflect it and react to it. Because we've got natural light, we will also have some atmosphere in the air. Kind of a light effect as well when you put atmosphere in, because atmospheric haze is part of the light of the world around us. So that was just a brush what I painted in. So now, on a blank layer, on a linear dodge, I've just started painting some light in. This time it's just a white brush and then we just start painting it in the corner a linear dodge on a low floor and then with the fill I would pull it down a little bit because we've got the natural light natural light is actually from the Sun and obviously the Sun gives out orange or reddy colors or those kind of warm colors so along with the white light we also need to add in some orange light I do this on various layers just to build it up as I go along. So all these were added in linear dodge. Next one, I then painted in some light rays or some atmospheric light leaks coming down through these buildings again. Just adds a little bit of interest to the image when you, when you, when you get shafts of light coming through these areas and you've got a lot of things kind of debris with pointy things and gaps and stuff so you would get some shafts of light coming through some of these from the light. On Colour Dodge, I just added some more warmth to that light. It's coming from the sun, there's going to be some reds and oranges in that colour. Let's just move up now. And this is where, once we've kind of got our base natural light, we want to start adding in some overlays again. This is stuff for stylizing. So I brought in this light leaks, uh, no actually the light ray overlay from the Neo Stock effects, uh, light effects pack. So I brought that in as well. What I did is I blended that over other elements, so you've got it coming over this rubble here. And it's coming over this background area here, building it up slowly. And then we've got some more light leaks. That's just an overlay. When you get light and natural light, you get dust floating in there, you get particles. So again, this is all kind of building up to realism. So we click that on and you see these little particles here. This is what you would get if you was using maybe a camera and you had maybe a dirty lens or you had a bit of a smudge on your lens. You get these little kind of lens flares and particles and adding in these little imperfections makes the image seem more real. It adds realism to the image uh, by adding imperfections. So don't be scared of adding these little things in. And then finally, we've got the last light leak which is another overlay set to screen blend mode all overlays are set to screen and i've put that over the top of everything so it's even blending over our figure here we do that because again it's an imperfection we've got this light leak coming over the main model but that's what's that's what would happen in real life you're adding imperfections to add actually add realism to your image so let's move on to light effects number two, which is fire. So a good way to stylize an image and add interest is to add fire. And there's lots of different ways of doing this. Basically the way I do it is I bring in fire overlays. I put them onto a screen blend mode. 
It gets rid of all the pixels darker than 50% grey and keeps all the pixels lighter than 50% grey. And with fire, that works pretty well because it gets rid of all the dark and leaves a light and it gives a very realistic fire effect. So let's just bring in our fire here. So these are the main fire overlays. They've got the fire, it looks all right, but with fire comes other things. You get embers, you get glow, you get reflective light in the places. So again, just like the natural light, it's about building it up over time with little increments. So again, we're bringing an other overlay here on screen blend mode and we get some particles, or I mean, sorry, some embers that are floating around and the same for the other side here. Sometimes this is an overlay, but also when you add the, uh, the embers, it sometimes also adds a little bit of a glow as well because you're using it on a screen blend mode. So it is adding a little bit of glow to your fire. You want to keep building that up. Obviously the fire is behind the cars, but some of the embers might be coming over the top of the cars or in behind the cars or behind the character. Maybe some embers might be floating in front of the character. It's about blending the scene as a whole. So let's go and bring in some more of the embers and then we add more firing like so again there'll be fire coming through these gaps in the windows so you want to go for realism once you kind of got the fire in place in the embers then you can start adding the glow and you do that a little bit like the natural light so you can paint that in uh, yourself so on a blank layer with an orange brush put it on a linear dodge you can get a nice glow like that and then you want to make sure the glow overlaps certain parts of the images, so it glow maybe it overlaps onto the car, it blends over the car, and then eventually you want it to blend over the model. So let's click on the next fire glow, which this one is on a color dodge blend mode. And we click it on. And there we go. With a kind of deep red color dodge blend mode, we can get this real nice warm fire glow. So let me just turn that off and back on again. You can see that's kind of affecting some of the car as well. Finally, we want to add some, think, some of these light leaks and fire particles into the foreground a little bit. So we do that further up in the layer stack. We've got the particles like we did with the natural light, bringing them in. You see these little particles here, there's one there, there's a couple here. You just want to bring them on in the screen blend mode, but also you want to pull down the opacity and blur them a little bit. You don't want it too strong but you want them there because it does add to the realism of the scene. And then finally, some fire light leaks as well. So these are overlay light leaks. These are from the Neo Stock Light Effects Pack. And basically, I just put them over the image at the end and you can, you look here, it's kind of blending over the model here and here. It's just creating a more realistic scene because the light is interacting with everything in the foreground and in the background. So let's jump on to light effects number three. And this is probably the one what you're all going to be peeing your pants over because <laughs> I know that nowadays the rim lighting is something that is very popular in Photoshop. And it's literally when I go onto Instagram, it's on every single image. Sometimes there's rim lighting on people where there's no actual motivated light, but let's get into it. So the way I Add rim light is, I mean, some people do it in one brush and just use one brush and go all the way around. What I do is, I, again, like I did with the fire and I did with the natural light, what I do is I kind of build it up in increments and then it's easier to change or modify as you go along. So let's just move down to the rim light on our model. The way I do it is you have the model layer here. We've got the uh, color matching and the tonal adjustments and then I create bank blank layers and I clip them to the model so it only affects the model. You can only paint on the model and nothing else. And then we build it over time. So let's start with the natural natural light rim light because again, we had natural light coming down here from behind her and it would be hitting her a little bit and you would get a little bit of natural light rim light. Let's just turn it on. It's, we have that light coming in on here and basically I've just painted with a brush on um, color dodge on both of these a white brush and I've just kind of painted it on and then I've used blend diff as you can see here to then 
pull it away from the blacks so it kind of mostly stays in the lighter areas or the lighter tones and it's just a way of blend diff is just a way of refining how your certain things look i use it for shadows and rim light because you can refine the rim light so it looks more realistic and then again i did it with the same technique with that and then a little bit more i just added a little bit more of a very soft natural light going across the whole of the gun here because we would have a bit of because the sun natural light is kind of coming past there here you would have a little bit of a light leak here as well or it would be affecting this area here and then we get onto the the fire rim light i basically do this in the same way what i do is i use either linear dodge blend mode or color dodge and i pick uh, i sample a color from the fire with a, with a brush very uh, kind of i would say maybe small brush uh, and it depends on the flow it's up to you to work that out yourselves but i usually use it on about maybe 30 percent flow and then i just start painting in slowly on different layers so we have the right hand side here like so and then we have the left hand side here as well and as you can see now we've got the fire and the fire glow and the rim light working in conjunction you've got these realistic rim lights but the thing about the way i've done them is my rim lights are motivated by the light that's already in the image so you've got the natural light and we've got the fire light so that's our motivate two motivated lights and then now we have the ref reflective light which is basically the rim light on the model I see a lot of images now kind of on Instagram where there's the, the, the model has neon kind of neon uh, rim lights kind of going down the body but then there's, it, it's coming from like there's no motivated light for it to be coming from. Again always just having the back in mind why am I putting these rim lights, rim lights in? Where's the motivated light? Why is it motivated? Where's it coming from? Does it look realistic? If you like this video and the techniques in it, be sure to check out my Hollywood processing course. In this premium course, we cover how to take your images from boring to Hollywood with styling tips, light tricks, dodge and burn and much more. So last but not least, we have our final light effects and that is the neon electric lights or the, the neon glows. When you're creating sci-fi images, it's a good way to stylize that uh, image by adding neon glows to certain things but what that also does is it adds interest to maybe areas that there isn't a lot of interest in so if we look at the model here she's got this visor on so we can add some motivated neon light there i'm not just randomly adding the light in anywhere i'm creating maybe either story or i'm creating motivation so we've got the visor and then what we could also do is add a little neon uh dial to this gun so it, the gun's electronic or it's got some kind of digital interface on it and what that is doing it's not also it's not only stylizing the image but it's adding interest and a little bit more of color to this model here because obviously she's wearing a lot of black so we can break that up a little bit and add a little bit more interest to her by adding these neon glows in so let's go down so the way i added the neon glows to the visor is i downloaded a hood overlay so like if you've ever seen uh, marvel movies the hoods what iron man has when he's looking in his mask and he's got those kind of glowing dials and stuff over his face that's a hood so i downloaded a hood stock and then i just brought it into photoshop and i just put it on a linear dodge blend mode and then i just resized it to the visor here and then i duplicated that and i added another one on and then i just added some blur to that as well so you kind of get that glowing effect and from there, again, like all the other things, it's about building the glow up as we go along in little increments on blank layers. So I added some more glow here. Talked about light and motivated light and rim light. Whenever you get light, you also get reflective light. So we've got this visor here and it's neon uh, blue, it's glowing. So there would also be some kind of reflective light on the cheek here, maybe some on the nose and maybe a little bit on the forehead and around here. So what do we do? We get a blank layer, we put it on color dodge and we just start painting in around those areas. And it doesn't have to be exact. As long as you've got it on there, it looks realistic. It's, there's, there's realism, it looks realistic. You're adding uh, 
elements to the image where you think, oh, that actually that light must be glowing because it's reflecting off her face. It's little touches like these what make you kind of make the images that you create level up. Now add one to the gun. So again, for, I downloaded an overlayer um, from uh, Adobe Stock. I then brought it in, put it on a, let's have a look, linear dodge blend mode. Again, we've got it in, now we just need to add the glow. Painting over, adding the glow to it on blank layers with a blue brush and we have the glow. And then finally, using a color balance adjustment layer, I painted in some more reflective light around just to add to that realism. And we get this uh, kind of realistic neon visor and digital interface on the gun that both have glow and on the face it's reflecting as it would in real life. So just to recap, you can use light effects to add stylation to your image, to style it. You can add it to add realism to your image and you can have it add it to kind of guide, it, guide your eye or the viewer's eye around the image. You don't just want a flat kind of one note image. You want to add little pops of light here and there and you want to add realism by creating light effects but also adding reflective light to them. Thanks for watching guys, if you enjoyed this video then I know you're going to love my 4 hacks to create an apocalyptic images in Photoshop. See you on the next video!